This video provides instruction on how to keep scorebook for a Central Loudoun Basketball League game. There is a lot of detail that can be kept in the scorebook. We will describe what is absolutely required and what is simply nice to have to accurately document a CLBL game. It is important for you to realize that while working the book or the clock, you are an official of the game, just like the referees on the floor. While we are not so militant that you can't clap for a nice play or say, nice shot, Johnny, you should not be shouting instructions to players or coaching from the table. And you should absolutely not be making any kind of remarks to the referees about their calls. Remember, you are an official of the game and should act impartially in that position. The absolute minimum information includes team and player information, player participation, running score, player and team fouls, and timeouts. Let's go through an example. The first thing to do when arriving is to input team information, starting with the team and coach information, the location, and the date of the game. Then input player names and numbers. A couple of suggestions that will help make the game easier for you are, one, if the team in white is sitting on your left, then put them on the left side of the book, and the visiting team on the other side. Write the team color at the top of the page just for a sanity check. Next, input players in order of their jersey numbers. It will be easier to find them during the rush of the game. So, we have our teams and our players identified. We now move on to documenting playing time. All players must check into the scores table before going on the court. The best way to record them is to put a single diagonal slash in the box for that quarter. You can see in this example that we have done this for the starting five players for both teams. Now, if a player is substituted out of the game during a quarter, mark this by placing another diagonal slash to make an X in the block for that player and put an X in the block for the player entering the game. In this case, let's say that O'Connell subs in for Harris. We would place an X for O'Connell and cross Harris to make an X. This is important because a single slash will represent a complete quarter played by a player, an X signifies a partial quarter played, and a blank signifies that that player sat out the quarter in its entirety. This is very important information that ensures that players and coaches are complying, complying with our playing time rules. If there is a protest, this is evidence that will determine if the game is forfeited or not, so it must be accurate. Next, as the game proceeds, we document the running score at the top of the sheet. Simply put a single slash on the points as they are scored. For instance, home team scores two points, then away team scores two, then the home team makes a free throw then the away team shoots a three-pointer. Simply continue this throughout the game, periodically double-checking with your partner working the scoreboard to make sure your scores match. Next item we will cover is documenting player fouls. If, for example, the referee addresses the table and states, foul on blue 33 with a push, you would mark the foul for the player and then mark it as a team foul. Notice that you must track team fouls by half. As the game progresses, continue to mark the fouls. Let's show what happens for this blue team as the half continues. Player foul, team foul. Player foul, team foul. Player foul, team foul. Now, you must tell the referees when you reach five fouls for any player because they are disqualified. You must also notify them when a team reaches seven team fouls and ten team fouls and a half. This is because the team will shoot a one and one 
when the opposing team reaches seven fouls and will shoot two shots for the double bonus if the team reaches 10 fouls. Remember, team fouls must be counted by half. It is also important that if there is the unfortunate incident of a technical foul on a player or coach, it must be captured. You can see the T fouls next to the players and the coach. Mark the player and place the details at the bottom of the page or mark the coach next to their name. Lastly, you need to track timeouts. Each team gets three full and two 30 second timeouts for the game. Simply write them down at the bottom of the page and strike them off as they are taken. Now, it's not necessary, but if you want, you can write them down in the quarter that they occurred. We have now shown you the minimum information that must be tracked in the book and a couple of suggestions to make it easier. To repeat, that is team and player information, player participation, running score, player fouls and team fouls, and timeouts. That's it. If you can keep this basic information, you are good and meet the needs of CLBL. Now let's look at some information that is commonly kept in the book for CLBL games that you may also want to maintain. Here we have been keeping the running score during the first quarter, but we have also kept track of who scored those points. Notice that we have also put a zero for a free throw attempted and a one over the zero if it is made. Obviously, this player attempted a free throw and made it, then attempted another and missed it. And this player had two attempts and missed both. We have also been tracking our timeouts, player fouls, and team fouls properly. At the end of the quarter, we close out the quarter by crossing off the running score, marking through the rest of the first quarter column so we don't mistakenly put future points there. Then we write down the points scored in that quarter and the score at the end of the quarter. We continue to do this each quarter as the game progresses. At the end of the game, a completed scorebook might look like this. We tracked all the mandatory information, team information, player participation, running score, player and team fouls, and timeouts. But we can also see points by player, including free throws attempted and made, and we also can double check our scorekeeping. For instance, we had a total of nine points in the first quarter, two, three, three, and one, and seven points in the second quarter, two, 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 and one, to add to 16. We also lined through the rest of the fouls at the end of the first half so we didn't accidentally mark fouls there during the second half. Obviously, here you can fill out totals and stats if you would like as well. That's it. Keeping the book is not difficult, but it is important. Please remember that you are an official of the game, so act accordingly. Thank you for volunteering to support CLBL and have a great season.